Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel in our Simple Abundance year. This is our journey together through Sarah Bon Brownick's book, Simple Abundance. And I told you guys in the last video that this video is going to be about a couple of the November entries that are all on the topic of spirituality. And I told you also earlier in the year, and you can probably tell if you're following along in the book, that Sarah is a Christian and she does share that throughout the book in various ways that she talks about spirit and God and prayer. And I realize that not everybody out there watching is potentially also on that same faith spectrum. Uh, but there's definitely still some great messages no matter what your beliefs are. So hope you stick with me and, and let me know your thoughts on these because faith, I think personally anyway, is very personal. And I don't know that everybody has the same level of belief in whatever they believe. And I know that there's so many different options out there for having faith and belief. And, and so I want to honor that. And my own personal belief is that, that there's universal salvation. If salvation, I, I don't know that I subscribe to the heaven and hell theological uh, definition that I was brought up with, but I believe that we are all uh, on a path of discovery here on earth. I think I've said this to you before. I believe that we all come from a collective consciousness and we return to that as well. And so I'm not exactly in the same frame of mind that Sarah is, although I love the Christian faith and I definitely have that at the root of a lot of my own thoughts. And I also told you, I think Jesus is a pretty cool guy. Um, so I will, I'll be reading some of Sarah's words and then sharing some of my own thoughts too. And I hope you will as well. So the first one I want to talk about is called Everyday Life is a Prayer. I want to ask you, what do you think of when you think of prayer? Is it the stereotypical thought of somebody on their knees in a reverent sort of manner, eyes closed, hands folded? Or is it more of a conversation with a dear friend or, or an asking of, of a supreme being that maybe you have fear of? I think that if you asked a hundred people, you'd probably get a lot of different answers on what prayer is. But Sarah, and here's my kitty, Annabelle. Uh, Sarah tells us that she thinks that every day life is a prayer. So you might be uh, screaming to the heavens, you might be uh, celebrating, you might be just having conversations with people. And she thinks that all of that is prayer. And that and that just you you don't necessarily have to be making a formal time to connect with spirit that you could be doing that through she's talked to us about cooking you know being spiritual you could be connecting to spirit in a lot of different ways in your everyday life and there may be like a wanting or a wishing or a hoping through your just everyday thoughts too that are also prayers let me know what you think about about prayer i like this uh, statement at the end why do we lift up our voice in prayer she asks because it's not good for women to be silent we need to get real life off our chests get whatever's bedeviling us into the open so that we can get on with it. We can't do that when we're stuck, and women do get stuck in a kind of self-destructive holding pattern when we're silent. And this is a quote from Deborah Tanner, a professor of linguistics. She says, every person's life is lived in a series of conversations. Women pray because they need 
someone to talk to who's really listening. I could see that about prayer too. If you have a real connection with spirit or whatever uh, heavenly entity that you believe you're speaking to, then it would be somebody to talk to and someone who's really listening and who's going to understand you, right? Yeah. I like the idea of of the the Christian God who is loving to you and forgives you and I I understand when people have a very strong faith and especially if they feel they need to repent or they need to reform or they are trying to better themselves having that outside source for comfort is is probably really positive and I'm envious of that in some respects I think I've said this to you guys before I did really have a what I felt was a strong connection with Jesus specifically earlier in my life and I don't feel that anymore um, like I said I'm more like all-encompassing I like to believe that like everybody finds their own way and that there's not just one way to um, enlightenment but I think in some respects and I do have some family members that are very religious I sort of wish I could surrender things over to another entity because I feel like a lot rides on me because I I do feel like it's my personal power and um, vibration that's determining what's happening not necessarily that I would be praying to somebody who would grant me you know saying yes or no that you're worthy of getting this thing that you're praying for that isn't a part of my own personal belief so when I think about prayer in the Christian sense I do think of it as saying thank you and 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 asking for forgiveness and then asking for things that you may want when I think of prayer in terms of spiritual prayer without that sort of like all empowering entity that's going to grant you what you want then I think of it more as communication like that that quote meant and I suppose remember I shared with you my angel counsel and those are all people that had passed on. I find it easier to connect with them just because I can picture that in my mind. And there's another entry in here where they talk about, um, Sarah talks about saints and how saints were all humans at one time. So I feel like I can connect with people that have passed on when I think about them in a human realm and I think that that's also still spiritual do you think that people go to the other side and that they're in a spiritual form what do you think Sarah tells us in the next entry that well she talks about the sacraments and again this is in terms of of the Christian faith faith there are seven traditional sacraments baptism penance the Eucharist, confirmation, marriage, ordination, and the healing of the sick. And she says, but we don't have to think of the sacraments only in religious terms. When we welcome a new day, we baptize it with our gratitude and enthusiasm. When we reconcile with another or ourselves and make amends, we experience penance. Confirmation bestows wisdom. Marriage is the sacrament of relationships. Eucharist is a sacrament of nourishment. Holy orders or ordination is the sacrament of authority and healing the sick is the sacrament of wholeness. It does matter how we braid our hair, pack our lunch, send them on their way, <laughs> greet their return, make suggestions, change the contract, analyze the data, leave the group, return a telephone call, pass the pasta, pour the wine, listen to a friend, lift a burden, share a secret, visit a nursing home, check 
for Monsters Under the Bed. For the wonderful things... Wait, hold on. Okay, I'm not going to read the rest of that. So, her point is that every day... Every day is, is sacred and that we can experience those sacraments in everyday moments like she just listed off a whole bunch of them the next entry is called the gap and I appreciate this one because she does talk about how in anybody's spiritual life there are going to be these gaps of time where they may lose the faith and she also shares a personal story about how she she was at one point in her life really held up as a a very religious and and believing person when she herself was totally feeling like I'm a fraud like everybody else believes more than I do and and people were saying like oh I just wish I had the faith that you have and she, she was like, I, I don't even know how people are thinking that I really like believe as much as I do because she was very honest and said she had a lot of moments where she would lose faith. And she shares some stories of people from the Bible as well that, that had their, they had the gaps in faith. Gaps are what makes faith possible, she says especially when pain is unbearable. If there were no doubt, why would we need faith? That's an interesting thought, right? Perhaps the doubts must be acknowledged, accepted, and embraced, and pushed past before our faith is strong enough, not just to talk about, but to, to sustain. And then it, she says, it's okay if you hold your breath when you leap, just don't look down. Faith is not about being sure. It's, it is not being sure, but betting with your last cent. Faith is not making religious sounding noises in the daytime. It is asking your innermost self questions at night and then getting up and going to work. Those are quotes from Mary Jean Irion, I-R-I-O-N. She wrote a a book called Yes World. Hmm. What do you think about that? What do you think faith is? Hmm. And we know the song, I'm sure you've heard it whether you're religious or not, uh, Amazing Grace. And in uh, November 11th, 11-11, uh, entry it was called amazing grace and she talks to us about what grace is about it's almost like when God gives us a break right and we access grace like every other spiritual tool she says by asking for it specially and regularly every morning gratefully and expectantly ask for one's daily portion of grace. Grace is spirit's test flight. We seem to glide through the moment, the encounter, the day, without friction, and we experience real life. Considering that most of us operate under the assumption that daily life is a battleground, it's no wonder we're amazed when out of the blue, the force suddenly seems to be with us, and grace is that force. We talked about the force over the summer in an entry. Think about the Jedi. I have a kitty that's really being distracting here. Yes. <laughs> I think pets are a little spark of grace. A little spark of spirit. Yes. All right, so we talked about prayers. What about, she has another entry called answered prayers. And what about unanswered prayers? I guess it all comes down to what I was saying about whether you believe that prayers are you asking an outside entity that's all powerful for something and then 
that entity determining whether you get the thing or not. So in that sense, then there would be answered prayers and unanswered prayers, right? And if you are not getting, if you're getting a no, I suppose, what does that mean? Does that mean that you're asking for the wrong things? That's what Sarah suggests. She, she makes a good statement saying, when your prayers seem delayed or denied, you need to ask spirit if you're praying for the right thing. If you're not, ask that the right prayer might be revealed to you. Very often when we're told no, it's really a no, not yet. To allow more time, space, wisdom, and experience to prepare for the glorious moment when, because you're finally ready, willing, and able, spirit answers you with a sharp, sudden, and resounding yes. I would agree with you being ready and what were the words she said? Ready, willing, and able. <laughs> I've talked to you guys about Abraham Hicks and, and resonance and energy. And in my perspective, things that you want would come to you when you are resonant with them. So if you want money, then you're going to need to get into that energy of abundance rather than lack. So anyway, that could be a whole other discussion. What about miracles? That's her next entry. We talked a little bit in the summer when, when we talked about the loaves and fishes entry about miracles and having faith. And I wonder if you notice miracles or if we're just sort of like oblivious to things now because especially if you watch the news and and they collect all the horrible stuff to tell us it can be easy to miss some miracles and sometimes they might be little things that are miracles that that you have to really look for a real miracle is not an event, she says, but how we perceive the event in our lives. Ask yourself which is the real miracle. When the check finally arrives, the deadline is extended, the lawsuit is settled, the exception made, or when you cope serene and smiling in the face of unbearable circumstances, triumphantly blowing everybody's mind, including your own with your poise and courage. Yeah, what if a miracle is something that you are unknowingly doing? Like she suggests, like overcoming difficult circumstances. I mean, that's as much of a miracle as overcoming an actual disease in your body, right? Something to think about. And then she goes on to tell us about, because this is the, the word miracles. Are you guys familiar with A Course in Miracles? It's often referenced, and uh, Marianne Williamson talks about it a lot in one of her books. And uh, Sarah takes some things that Marianne Williamson has said about it. Through a daily meditation and workbook, seekers learn to surrender all of the ego's preconceptions about what they want, need, and think will make them happy, exchanging it only for the practical daily application of love in our lives. Like that's really the focus of the Course in Miracles. And it also talks to us about how we're born, we're born in love, and then we come to Earth and we are you know, we're taught things like fear and struggle and sickness and that there's only a certain amount of resources and not everybody can have everything. Guilt, death, scarcity, loss. And, and so those things often are replaced, or love is often replaced by those things. So there's a lot in here about A Course in Miracles as well. That's on page 506 and 507 if you want to check that out. And then finally, and actually it's tomorrow's entry. This is the last one in the series. It's called Heaven is Watching Over Us. 
and she talks to us a little bit about angels here and she suggests that if you had imaginary friends if you want to call them that when you were little that they were they were angels probably and she tells us a story about a boy that was lost in the woods and he ended up being found and and he said that a bear took care of him the night before and it's he was like somewhere that there aren't even bears at all <laughs> so you know in that case they were saying like it must have been some sort of like angel on earth and we talked about didn't we have an entry yeah angels on earth when we were yeah when sarah was telling us about all the divine intervention and when you were about to give up and then an angel presented themselves on earth yeah so let me know what you think about prayer and angels and faith i hope it's a positive for you I definitely consider myself to be spiritual. I'm not religious. Um, you know, I have appreciation for all the religions and and I, I, I guess, you know, I have a unique sense of what spirit is. I know there's others that think the same way that I do, but I don't subscribe to a certain theology, like I said, but I can appreciate it all and I, appreciate Sarah bringing it in and I don't think that we could really be on this path without there being some sort of a spiritual conversation right because we're we are connecting with our inner selves and our souls I certainly believe that we have a soul I believe that it's a consciousness that you know it's part of that consciousness that we collective consciousness consciousness that we come from so I do believe that there's a part of us that's divine and that we are heavenly beings having a human experience. I think that's a bumper sticker, right? <laughs> so I don't think we're just cells that are just here on earth. I think, I think we, there's an eternal part to us. I don't have all the answers. I think we had another entry about how like there's things that we're not supposed to know, right? I think that's what makes life a little bit more interesting. And think about in ancient times when people had to come up with like the explanation for the sky and the sun and, and they worshiped a lot about nature. So throughout history, there's been so many explanations of creation and the start of our universe and we won't entirely know it until we until we pass on and out of this current human experience that we're having but we have had teachers come and tell us things and and Jesus was one of them and perhaps that's something that resonates with you or perhaps you feel more in line with other cultures and and more ancient teachings or maybe you are on the new thought sort of spectrum like i am whatever it is i hope it's a positive like i said and i hope that you can think about how this all ties in to your own sp spiritual path and being along on the journey on the simple abundance path and I'd love to hear any comments you have. And I'll be back with another video. I'm still going to be planning to talk about some of those financial entries from the older version of Simple Abundance as well. So I'm not exactly sure what the next video will be. But I'll see you soon for that. And thank you as always for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.